Monks over on the start now for the Temple, the student men's eights. And we have Shrewsbury School on the far side and Shipley nearest the camera. Go! Yeah, interesting one here, it's the student eights, but we've got two schools, Shrewsbury School on the left of our picture there, Shipley College on the right, and these are the second teams. Uh, so the second eights from each of those schools racing here in the Temple. So it could be quite a good close one. Yeah, it's hard to call there's so little form for many of these crews through the season this season, isn't it? And so there's also that nervousness of sitting on the start and not being entirely sure what you're facing uh, in the opposition. Uh, but clean start from both crews. They're just coming off the end of the island. You can see the breeze there just swirling through the trees to the left of the picture as we pick them up alongside in our catamaran. Looks like Shipley may have a slight edge as we come alongside. Yeah, I really like what Krista Scott did there, steering uh, this Shipley crew. She managed to keep the crew really tight to the island. There's sort of a fear of being that tight to the island. You know, you sort of feel like almost in the dark, you're nervous about the barricade blades maybe catching on a branch or something. But she left the boat right in there and they took distance towards the top end of the island. And now they've come out of the island, they look to be really moving, really trying to capitalize on, on the, the, the advantage they took coming out the end of Temple Island. Yeah, fully agreed. Nice move by uh, Krista the Cox and uh, a quite nice fluid rhythm coming through from the Shipmate crew on this side. They look quite relaxed for this stage of the race, I'd say, with you know, maturity on the uh, heads of those young shoulders. The best of the J16, so 16 and under rowers, plus the second eight is in this crew came together uh, after winning some uh, medals at the J16 at national schools and second weight won silver at national schools. So there, there are no slouches in the Shipmate crew, and I think that's telling. Shrewsbury on the far side, just looking a little bit more laboured. We're probably about 450 metres into the race here, just approaching the barrier. Yeah, coming up towards the barrier, and we talked about this crucial moment of trying to get out of sight, um, trying to get the other crew to think, oh, how far round am I supposed to crane my neck? And you know you're not really supposed to crane your neck. You get told off for that by the people rowing behind you if they see you looking out of the boat. So it's not a glance anymore. It would have to be a head turn. Um, so that's that bit more demoralising, of course, for Shrewsbury School on the right in the picture as we're looking now. Yep, and we see the flag going down on the barrier signal, and the number two is hoisted, signifying that uh, Shipley have got the lead. We'll see how much of a lead they have. And that's demoralising too, unfortunately, isn't it? You see the board go up, and you think, have we got an overlap? So you can see it there, the two and the one, just showing that there might be just a little bit of an overlap. As yet, Matt, you're just seeing the steering there. Yeah, just seeing the steering uh, on both crews, actually. Maybe there's a bit of a swell coming in and a bit of a cross breeze coming in, but you can see how they've had to steer away from the bank on both, uh, on both boats, and now they're trying to steer back towards the centre. That's costly. Looks to me like it's been a bit more costly for Shrewsbury on the far side, who are already struggling, as you say, to stay in contact um, with the young crew from Shipley. Shows me also a second eight crew and um, limited experience here, but this would be fantastic for these young athletes to be first time down the Henley track, uh, get one of these things under their belt, and they'll be looking to try to be in the Princess Elizabeth, which is the Blue Ribbon event for school crews. One thing I noticed as well about this Temple Challenge Cup, Greg, you know, started in 1990, and in the second ever version of the Temple Challenge Cup, there's a man called Andrew Scott, uh, who won the Temple. And Andrew is the father of Krista, who you mentioned earlier, the Cox of the Shiplake crew, um, and the first female Cox for Shiplake to appear at this regatta. So a nice connection across the years. One of the things we love about Henley and its 182-year history is the connections between the generations. What a brilliant day for the Scott family, and, and I'm sure that they'll be in the enclosures enjoying what you do at Henley, which is you come back and you meet up with your old crewmates and you remind yourself of what you put yourself through to be racing on this Henley course. And these crews would have put themselves through so much. If you think about it, for the last two years, they didn't get to race here in 2020, but they'll have been looking forward to this. They'll have been working those sweaty sessions in the gym, those sessions where you're lying face down and you can see your own puddle of sweat. And you know that's what it's about it's about getting out of here and racing on this course we put ourselves through that and then we want to relive it every single time we come back to the regatta brilliantly put craig and you're absolutely right of course for all of us the memories of our heyday but something that's special about the sport of rowing i think is that you compete on an individual basis for your seat in the boat and you're competing often with the guys that you end up racing with and so i think one of the things that forms the bond of respect is that competition for the seat and you're immediately in the boat and your crewmates so that skill of being able to drive competitively but also then harness collaboration i think is something that serves row as well perhaps distinct for many other sports it's an incredible sport for building cohesion and respect with your fellow athletes absolutely and i, I remember matthew back to my time 
when I was at Hampton School and you were in the first date, probably three years, four years older than me, looking up to your first date and thinking, one day I might get to row with people like that. One day I might get to compete at Henley Royal Regatta and not be stood here on the bank watching, but actually to be out on the water competing. And that's what we aspire to, it's what we want to do. And these guys will have, have role models for themselves they're looking up to, and they've now taken a step on the journey. They're not on the bank anymore, they're on the water. I think you're so right about that inspiration of a generation. I remember our fellow commentator Martin Cross, teacher at Hampton School, ordinary guy, suddenly turns up with an Olympic gold medal and you start to realise that maybe Olympic gold medalists are human too. And I was glad to have played a small role in inspiring you towards yours, Greg. No, no, thanks, Matt. And, and I think that's what's special again, this Henley Royal Regatta. Um, you remember these races for the rest of your life. They'll also remember the experience of going over to Forley Meadow, um, around Henley Rugby Club, where the crews are boating from now. It's a different experience than being in the boat tent enclosures. But these athletes will be alongside all the other competitors. They'll be seeing each other, and they'll be thinking, this is a pretty special shared experience we've got. And they'll also be looking at how the, 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 the top performers in our sport handle themselves and spend their time around the regatta and that's all part of the great learning experience. Absolutely, so um, Shiplake have now a very commanding lead and have um, let themselves uh, relax a bit into the final stages of the course as they approach the enclosures. Looking here at the back of the Shrewsbury School crew, um, still progressing well down the course, holding their form together well despite the challenges here. As we said, really great experience for these young athletes and you know we, these are names that we may well see uh, occurring through the regatta down the years as well. Uh, looking at the Shiplake crew here, we've got Ned Floyd at bow, Lucas Morgan at two, Tom Rackett at three, Adam Hunt at four, Fred Fox at five, great name Fred, Dylan Hillier, Felix Arkell, stroked by Lucas Bicker, and crossed, as we said, Cox, as we said, by Krista Scott, handing the baton down the generations from uh, her father. Absolutely, following the footsteps of Will Satch, who would have worn those colours, Ben Hunt Davis, We've all made it to the top of the Olympic podium gold medalists who started their rowing at Ship Lake College, um, wearing that very same all-in-one uh, rowing just down the river here from Henley. And now they found their way all the way through the sport. Who knows what could lie ahead for these nine athletes or the athletes in that Shrewsbury crew as well. Temple Challenge Cup and a solid win to the local crew from Shiplake, popular in the enclosure, and they'll be very happy with that uh, out of the way. And Shrewsbury crossing the line now. Valiant effort from a very young set of athletes there. Right, hit, right, hit, right. Right.